Hello, Riderflex Nation. Steve Irvin here again from recruiting and consulting firm Riderflex. We provide career advice and job interviewing tips on this podcast. And if you enjoy the show, please remember to subscribe to our channel and like the episodes. How are you, man? I'm wonderful. How about yourself? It's a pleasure. I mean, really, I'm honored uh, that you're on the Rider Flex show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, I'm I'm uh, fa- always fascinated by entrepreneurs and people starting businesses. And I was an executive for a long time, and then I started Rider Flex, and then I learned how tough it is to actually start a business on your own. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we interview people for a living, basically, and we, you know, our job is to place candidates at companies, but part of what's happened is we, we started a podcast that uh, was really intended to give career advice and job interviewing tips to candidates. And then entrepreneurs started calling in, helping me give that advice. Um, and sometimes it's just a really cool story to have an entrepreneur talk about, you know, all the hurdles of trying to get something started. And so you, you have a really cool story, obviously. And I thought it'd be great to have you on and, talk about onyx sports that's awesome well i'm uh, I'm excited to uh to share the experience so for the listeners you know a lot of our folks aren't you know mma fans or a lot of them probably are but some of them aren't and so let's just pretend like for a minute some of them don't know uh who trevor whitman is uh why don't you give them just a little bit of a background right not to not to go into a full-blown mma story but you know just Talk to us about who you are, where you're from, just a little bit of family stuff, and and maybe touch on the MMA, and then we'll roll into Onyx. Awesome. So, uh, you know, I got started into martial arts, uh, uh, oh, I was probably eight years old when I started karate, and I started karate because I was being bullied, and uh, my dad was a, oh. uh, he worked for Home Depot when Home Depot was booming, and uh, he was a store opener, so we were moving all the time. Okay. And I was a very small kid. Uh, that was 4'11", 90, uh, 92 pounds, all the way up through 11th grade. So really, I was, I was kind of the smallest guy in every school that I went into. But uh, so I started uh, martial arts at a young age okay. and uh, just fell in love with the competition and uh, then got into boxing and uh, I loved it. And uh, I Box, got boxed in, boxed in high school? Uh, yes, in high school and uh, got injured and couldn't box no more. Uh, so I started coaching at a young age. I started coaching at uh, 20, 20 years old and uh, through the process, uh, ended up owning seven different gyms. Uh, they just kept growing in size and uh, had the opportunity to uh, train 18 world champions, uh, wow. which I'm super proud of. And uh, now I'm uh, still training only two athletes, uh, Justin Gaethje and Rose Namunis. And uh, you know, I had a team of 40 athletes at a time and sold my gym back in 2016 or actually gave it to one of my buddies so I could focus on Onyx and the reason why I started focusing on Onyx is my body got so beat up coaching uh, that it was hard for me to coach a lot of these guys I had a guy Shane Carwin who was uh, he fought at 265 this uh, heavyweight division in UFC he was a UFC champion okay and he's so big he was just beating me up and uh, so I started making mitts <laughs> I took my mom's sewing machine and uh I cut open a pair of mitts and I was refoaming mitts for about five years before I started sewing my first pair of mitts. Wow. uh, There was just no left or right on mitts. And so I made a left hand and a right hand and uh, just started thinking through it. And after my first pair of mitts that I made, uh, all my coaches at my gym were like, hey, how much for those? Yeah, yeah. How, <laughs> pay for the materials, and I was going to like Joanne Fabrics and just uh, your typical place to just get cheap materials. And uh, so I sold about five pairs in my gym, and it took me a little bit to do my first run. And then I'd be at events, and other coaches would be like, "Where'd you get those?" And so I, I see selling mitts. And now, were you thinking? Were you thinking then I'm going to start a business, or you're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm just going to help my friends and people I know. I'll, I'll, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's not, you know, I was, I was, right. would want them and I'd say, all right, you need them. This is what it's going to cost. And about a year later, I had a year wait for equipment. I started uh, wow. uh, doing different pieces from body shields uh, to shin guards and my prices, I was selling body shields for a thousand dollars. I'm still about a year out on custom, fully custom stuff that I make. And I'm pretty much the only sewer in house, but. Uh, so it's man, all made, it's all made by hand right there in your location. 
Yep, oh. the, the Foley Customs is. We actually brought a par- product to market, which is uh, the glove with a patent that we had put together. And it took us about three years to get the patent. Okay. And uh, now we're, we're launching a full line of training gear. And But I make all, all the products first. I, I prototype everything myself, test them with my athletes and other athletes. And then once we get them down, we patent and, uh, and then bring the market. Now, at what point, at one point, so you're training and that's what's paying the bills, right? Yeah. You're, you're a coach. You're a trainer. That's your that's your career. That's how you're Actually, making. Actually, it's, it's a hobby now. Uh, my career is is Onyx. Okay, um, I, but I mean, but I mean, back, back yep. yeah, but back then, that's what your yep. career was training. And then, was there a moment where you said, "Hey, I'm I'm going for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a company." And or, you know, how did that decision happen? Yeah, for you know, the, I was doing the fully customs, and that was just out of need. That was that was built by need. All of a sudden, I realized there was a huge need. Uh, for the equipment and equipment just has not changed if you look at any other sports out there from football and and uh, me and my wife snowboard snowboard every thursday during the winter time and i always look at the technologies and snowboarding and mma almost were birthed at the same time in the early you know okay. late 80s, early early 90s when ufc came or mma uh, uh became big so there was no technology I was seeing in, in the MMA space, but I was seeing it all around, especially in snowboarding. There's technologies and foams and strapping and, and, and just support. So I was working out with uh, Derek Wolf, Derek Wolf uh, from the Broncos. And okay. I showed him a hand wrap I was working on because I could see he was embarrassed kind of wrapping his hands. Here he is, a professional athlete. He's like, <laughs> his hand wrap. So I'm joking around with him. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh here he is, a professional athlete. Yeah. And he said, he, I showed him my product and he goes, man, I want you to meet someone. Uh, I think you'd be a good fit. And he introduced me to uh, JP O'Brien. Okay. Uh, Black Lab Sports. And and that's how we got connected too. Yeah. That's how yep. we got connected. Yep. And that's really how Onyx uh, came to be. It was, I, uh, I hit all my goals as a coach uh, from having a heavyweight champion to, I was, I was always so goal oriented. And I've hit every goal that I wanted to from a trainer. Uh, standpoint from a coaching standpoint and uh, I was looking for that next venture and after talking to JP for about nine months uh, I was his first company he took on and uh, he's you know he he's an investor but the most important him as an advisor and uh, Mm -hmm. as a mentor Mm -hmm. has really really changed my life in so many different ways I mean I ran businesses prior to him and his education on what he did with me from a business standpoint just blew my mind and uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at without him. Uh, that's uh, very nice of you to say. Yeah, he's a great guy. What What's the hardest transition for an athlete, you know, to go from that to, to running a business? You know, what, what were some of your, you know, early hurdles in making that transition? Well, uh, you know, he said something to me because because uh, one thing is is I've never been driven by money. I've been driven by passion and purpose. Okay, and uh, that's what made me a good coach is again having a target, and and focusing it and not not letting anything get in the way until you get to that target. And uh, I I was always uh, one of those guys that you know in the in the fight space you don't make lots of money, and I didn't care about that. Like I was living the dream. I was helping people get to their goals. Uh, it was it's it's. It filled me with joy. So I was, I was very, very happy with what I was doing, but I was never, you know, gaining for my family and for my kids. And, and uh, I always had kind of an issue with money, just thinking it would never come to me, but I was never really chasing it. And I had told him, I was like, man, I, I don't know how I would manage a business, how I would do this. And he goes, how do you manage your fighters? And I was like, oh, you know, and he just started to, to link things together. And uh, when, you, when you come from uh, the athlete background, you know, if I have to go, let's say I'm a professional athlete and I have to go get a job after I'm done fighting because your, your career only lasts for a short period of time, mm-hmm. who's going to hire you? Are they going to hire you because you're a star? What if you weren't a star? Are you going to go to Home Depot <laughs> and, and, and push carts right. for $16 an hour? You know, that's a hard transition. And But when you're in that space for so long, you become an expert in understanding what needs are and, and what you can do in that space. And JP just linked all those together. Mm-hmm. And really made me understand the business sense and, and helped me not overthink it. Just kind of use my skills and how, how to run a business like Cal is running a team. And he does that with other athletes that are super, super cool. Do you have employees now? Yes. Okay. How big, how, yeah, how many, how many, five? Five employees, correct. Gotcha. And how long has Onyx been in existence now? Uh, three years now. Three years. Okay. 
And and what's is the plan to continue to launch new SKUs and new products? What what talk us you know what what's coming up? Yeah, talk so, to us. Well, we started really you know as a research and development company on on making sure that the products that we're going to bring to market were you know it's how how do you tell the story and how do you create something that's new? Okay. And and not just over focus on technology, create a story behind what is going on and what is the problem, and then what is the solution? And we've spent three years on testing and really digging down deep and using all these athletes and positioning ourselves into creating partnerships. And when it comes to partnerships, that's leverage. Cause I feel like network is everything when it comes to business. Right, and right. Uh, uh, That's been our strategy. And we've put all the time into making the products right. That now it's time to go to market and everybody knows who we are. We're a brand that, that everybody in the industry knows. Good. And the cool thing is, is we've kind of positioned ourselves as the hard to get, you know, that timeline of people waiting. It's like, oh, I can't have it. I want it so bad. It's the first thing I noticed when I looked at your, when I was prepping for the call, I was, you know, studying all of your stuff. Yeah. yeah. You go, you go into your website and it's like, you know, sold out on hold. Sold and we out. Can't keep it in. Like, we're, like we're doing small runs and uh, our small runs are to test manufacturers to be able to make sure that they're going to do the quality that we need. And for instance, I, I call uh, boxing, uh, kickboxing, uh, MMA, the combat sports, I call it the knockoff sport uh, uh -huh. of everything. Like everybody is knocking off different there. You know, you have the Mexican Reyes gloves that became super popular and uh, every company out there is knocking that same glove off. And so I didn't want to use a glove company. So we went and found a, a snowboard company. Again, I come from the snowboard world and seeing all the technology okay. and their, their foams that they use and their waterproof leathers and, uh, or, or synthetic uh, 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 leathers that they're using. And I wanted to use them to see if I could teach them how to make the products, mm. show them how to do it, and then not have anybody be able to knock our stuff off. And because uh, and, I feel like they'd fall into old habits and making gloves where you're hitting with your door knocking knuckles and, and, and the things that were causing the injuries. And our small runs, man, they're sold out before we even get them in. And it's super fantastic. cool, but we're testing <laughs> manufacturing, and I know manufacturing is one of the biggest nightmares in in, in business when you when you're uh, bringing products to mar market. And uh, so we're moving slow, and now we're preparing to move fast. Yeah, you, know, you take so much pride in making that stuff yourself. Does that worry you? Are you, are yes. you nervous? Are you nervous about? It? <laughs> That's the hardest thing to overcome. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, all of a sudden your your work is going uh, is being manufactured, and there's other people touching the quality. And yeah, yeah, do you yeah you think about that? Yeah, completely. And uh, you know that's why we set up our uh, no questions asked returns, and we want to make sure that our products last over a year. We actually have a thing set up that if you're if your if your equipment falls apart or something happens, the Velcro stops wearing out or a stitch pops and anything, I don't ask a question. I send you a brand new pair of gloves. I just ask that they send the gloves back so I can cut them open and look at all the materials and say, hey, this this guy had this glove for six months. This is what's going on. This is what we need to change. So I can look at the longevity of what's going on with the products and continue to evolve research and development with the, with the true consumer, you know? Super thorough, super intense about quality. That's why everybody's asking for them right there, right? Exactly, but, yeah. Was it tough? Uh, so when you started it, you bootstrapped the whole thing yourself, but at some point you started, you started looking for investors. You started looking for outside cash at some point. Mm -hmm. was, t talk to us about that. It, you know, because a lot of people that listen to the podcast, you know, they, they want to be an entrepreneur, but they don't have the funds or they're trying to figure out how to raise cash or, or they don't know how to ask people for money. It's a, it's a hard step for a lot of folks. Was that tough the very first time you sat down and asked somebody else to, to invest money? Talk to us about that experience. Yeah, that was, uh, again, the, the coaching and mentorship that I got from JP. He is, he is the, the key to what I've done because, again, I've never asked anybody for anything. Right. That's hard. When you guys <laughs> yeah. go out and he's like, stop asking for money. It's what are you uh, going to bring? How do you bring them value? How do you uh, bring them an opportunity? And when you believe in something that you're bringing to market so much, it's easy to tell the story. And honestly, raising has been probably one of the easiest things that, I, that, that I've oh. done. It's, it's the hardest, but it's probably one of the biggest fears that I've had. Uh, but being a, a coach from the MMA space, I live to face fears. It, it, anytime that something scares me, it's like, oh, I got to go chase it. If something I can't think <laughs> of. Uh, but when it came to raising money, I would say that probably the biggest advice I could tell people is learn to tell a story about and the hard part for me was explaining to someone that wasn't in my space. 
And I was always, I always spoke at that expert level and JP's like, Hey man, I don't understand what you're talking about. You're talking, about <laughs> talking to a doctor. Right. And so I had to learn how to pull it back. And how I did that was telling stories and figure out who's the person I'm talking to and how can I create some type of story that they've had from, from hitting a bag in their, in their, in their uh, basement or old boxing. If they're an older guy that grew up around boxing, how can I tell a boxing story? And it's all about the story and simplifying what you're doing and keep it simple. And that was one thing, again, JP taught me is bring one product to market, see how it does. How Don't it does. overdo it. Know your industry. What are they doing? And that was a big thing I noticed in the industry was everybody sells 15 different types of gloves in, in seven different colors. And we simplified, said one color, one glove, uh, uh, two sizes, and see what happens. And <laughs> crazy. He actually, there's a funny story. He proved me wrong on a situation. I was like, ah, we need to have a, because everybody has a high price glove, a mid, mid uh, price glove and a low price glove. And okay. I came in with a premium glove that was, yep. you know, top of the top of the level. And here we are bringing a first product to market. And that scared me because everybody I talked to from the industry that's been in the equipment space said, there's no way you can sell a glove at that space or at that price. Mm. And, uh, so I was like, I tried a, a gold series, which are our premium, and a, and a silver series, which is our, our mid-level. Okay. And they're, they're, there's, they're not much different. There's the gold series is a $309 glove with the technology in it, strapping system. Silver has the strapping system in it, just a little bit off what our gold series is. Same materials. $309, $225. We have a whole bunch of our mid-level gloves still in stock. Is Everybody right? wants premium. Yep. So we, we were yep. able to prove premium. Uh, Prove that they would sell and those are what's selling out of stock and I looked at JP and I was like, yep Stick stick to premium <laughs> Find your space And focus on what you're great at, you know If there's a if there's a, a wannabe entrepreneur out there that has an idea or a product and You know, they're working their nine-to-five job and, and they've been thinking about it for two three years, but they just haven't made a move They're scared. They're worried What what would you tell them? <laughs> You know, the thing is, is, is first off environment, who are you around? Are you, if in your workspace, are you talking to people who have ideas, but won't move forward? Okay. Find people who are doing it and get around them. You know, if you want to be a millionaire, go find 10 millionaire friends. And all of a sudden you're going to find their connections, how they talk. You'll start to adapt to that environment. Another thing is obsessed. You have to be obsessed. If I call it, you know, I like to use the word addiction because it, 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 it kind of scares people. They're like, oh, addicted. <laughs> be addicted to what's great. And it's a great world. A word. Be yeah. addicted to your product and obsess it and think high, dream, dream high. And the whole thing is expect that it's not going to be easy. Create a plan. The plan will change and just obsess that, 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 that mission mission. Uh, it's, I always say it in a sense like this, it's like taking a trip. Like if I want to go to Florida, mm -hmm. you expect this, you know, Sandy beaches, nice weather, and you have to start by getting there. Okay. You don't know if you're going to hit a detour. You probably are going to hit a detour. You get a, get a map and you, you go, all right, I'm going to get there in this much time. It's, sometimes you get there faster. Sometimes you get there three times the length. But just get there. Just get there. And when you get there, just understand that don't, don't be satisfied that it's going to be perfect. Right. Because when you get there, you're going to be on to your next goal. You're, the sand's going to be hot and you're going to have to put the towel down and <laughs> break from your feet. It's going to rain two out of the three days that you're there. That's it's okay. Right. Have That's a target. Right. The key is the journey. And expect uh, the, those detours and look forward to them. You you had I mean a great career in MMA, right? I mean, by the way, go to 2018 MMA Coach of the Year, right? Am I correct? Yeah. Congratulations on that! Awesome, awesome career. What what's been harder, training world champions or starting Onyx? Uh, I would say they both they they both have their their pros and cons. They both have their 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 days that you just sit there and go, why am I doing this? And they have the days that are just you know. Where you can sit back, take the easiest breath, and go, man, I'm in the right spot. What is the what is the Super Bowl moment for Onyx so far? I would say right now. I, every right every now. day that I get here and I go, man, I'm still going on the process. Again, I, I'm so obsessed with the journey that that I'm not obsessed with the final goal because I know it's gotcha. good. My, I, I keep it simple. I go, hey, I'm going to change the industry. I'm going to change the industry. That's all I focus on. I don't focus on what it's going to exactly look like. Yeah. I just see me changing the industry because I can envision that and see it. And then I focus on my daily process. You don't win world championships by just all of a sudden you're in, the, in a title fight. No, you win it one round at a time. <laughs> 
So now that you're hiring employees, well, I can't, I can't imagine what it must be like to interview with you. <laughs> you know, I'm guessing they might be just a little bit intimidated. When you're talking to somebody and doing an interview, what are you looking for? What, what character traits or personality? Like, what, what, are you, what are you trying to identify to make a decision whether or not you want that person on your team? Uh, first off, I, I look to see if they have purpose. Okay. Uh, and I don't care what their purpose is. It's, again, are they purpose driven? Are they someone who actually is looking for something and in and, and, and route and search for something? And second piece is coachability. Yes. How coachable are they? And that is the key. And that's really all I look for. I don't look for any other piece because I feel like if someone is coachable, you can guide them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there are other things like, you know, sometimes I feel like a lot of times people are stuck in patterns where they come in these, this pattern and they're dressed up a certain way and they're like, I have to fit this model. And I feel like that is the first sign that will push me away from someone. Uh, because I feel like they're not, they're, there's no purpose to them. They're, they're living how they feel people should live. And when I can see someone who is unique and, and, and has uh, uh, some uniqueness to them and have passion, mm-hmm. And it's key. Again, if they're coachable, you can guide them to what they're doing. And people who get stuck in these patterns, I have to be there at this time. I have to end the day at this time. Don't get nothing done. But the people <laughs> who are task oriented and have a task to get to, it doesn't matter what time it takes. Some days, some weeks you might work 65 hours, but some weeks you might only work two days because you got your, you got, got everything done. And that's how I look at hiring people is, are they coachable? Are they passionate about what they're doing and are they going to love what they do? Because labor is the same thing unless you uh, put love with it. You, I, the uh, labor of love is key. It's still work though. Right. Yeah, are there specific questions you ask them or you just, is it kind of free flow? You just kind of want to get to free know flow. them. Yeah. Free flow completely. I get to, I get yep. to, uh, to learn someone. Uh, again, relationships. It was like, uh, again, back to JP, when he had met me, he's like, I just want to build a relationship, see if we can work together. And he has this model says no assholes. And that's how I've always been is treat everybody, uh, even the people that we're facing across the, 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 the octagon or the ring in boxing, because mm-hmm. we're not f- fighting them, we're fighting ourselves. Every, every loss that you have comes from a hesitation or a mistake that you're making. And if they caused it, you're allowing them to control you, you got to be in control of yourself. So again, back to, you know, it's, it's all about personality and a relationship. Can you help someone find the best them? You know, one of the things I noticed when I was studying for the podcast and studying you and preparing, you, you said this in one of uh, your interviews, you were being interviewed by uh, somebody. I think it was when you were going in for the awards uh, show and you had to wear that suit that you had to, yep. you had to go buy, right? You had, you didn't have any suits. That was your first suit. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of sweatsuits. Yeah, right. <laughs> not, not a, not a nice yeah. uh, but one of the things you said that really, you know, struck me about your, belief in how important networking and relationships are i think somebody was asking you uh what what's it going to be like to be an espn commentator and they're going to want you to uh they're going to want you to sit in the corner and and critique uh the coaches or critique the fighters or say something about them right and you you correct me if i don't tell the story right but basically what uh, you could tell that you were honored to be asked to do that but you were nervous about saying anything that might hurt their feelings because these are people you have relationships with and it, and you could tell like that really was you were concerned or, you know you were like man I yeah I want to do this but you know these are my friends and I have relationships and I don't want I don't want to hurt their feelings that really that struck something with me it told me how important people are to you and and that you're emotional about that I, I thought that was great just just so you know did well, I get that did, did I get that story right yes yeah, so in kind of the way I'm, I'm I'm stating it like I don't mind critiquing what's going on yeah. But allow me to speak about if, if I have time to speak about my faults as a coach, like right. when I left a mouthpiece out in uh, Bernal Phillips's fight for a world championship. And uh, I remember him looking at me. It was a, he's a boxer. And uh, he looks at me and I look down on my on my thigh and there's a mouthpiece with, <laughs> with a whole bunch of saliva in it sitting on my thigh. And we're about two <laughs> minutes into the round. And I remember going, oh, my gosh. And if I step on the canvas, I'll see the fight will get fight, stopped. Fight right? yep. it's mouth piece. And I'm like, I, I look at him about 15 seconds before the round's over. And he's like, he's like blocking and defending. And he's like, damn, D. But he's like looking. <laughs> and, you know, one of the worst experiences that, 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 oh, that I do. And uh, he, here I am. 
a world-class coach doing that. But I never forgot a mouthpiece again after that. And the thing is, is, is critiquing and, and, and knowing that you, you do things wrong is the best thing in life. That's a, that, that equal seat of, uh, of, of, of default where you are at your lowest times is where you find out the most about yourself. Mm-hmm. And those experiences will let you know, don't do it again. And if you yeah. can accept it, then I don't feel bad about critiquing my friends because I can say, hey, man, this is yeah. what I did. But like, <laughs> let's talk about it. But I wanted to be on because the, because these are these guys' careers, and I don't want to talk bad about someone, and yeah. and then all of a sudden they're a bad coach. No, they're not. They just right. had a bad because we have to perform just like the athlete. Right. So if I could speak about that, it'd be easier for me. So <laughs> I'm trying to put my own flex on the the commentating part and not put good or bad on it. Just kind of put my two cents on it. So so you got a family. Plus you're going to do some commentating. Plus you're trying to run a company. Plus you're still coaching. Yep. Uh, how do you balance that, my friend? <laughs> uh, you just you, you to to me when people say hey you have to have a schedule again those, those patterns i i work at the workflow and the main thing is is i got to balance my family which is you know again one of the most important uh, uh things to my center is make sure that i get a certain amount of time per week and then everything else fits in and if i go two weeks where i work real hard at the at the business i make sure i get three or four days with the family and i take family trips uh, pretty often and uh, make those mandatory. Get my fire back. Matter of fact, when I tried to schedule this podcast, you were on a family trip, and you said, "Hey, man, yep. I can't, I can't do it this week. I got family stuff, which I love." About every three months, I I do a five day trip. That's great. I think that's fantastic. You you've had you know an awesome career already. I mean, you've already accomplished so much. But at the age of uh, I don't know, mid forties, right? Something like 43. that. Or right, actually, uh, forty. I just turned forty four on the twenty seventh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So forty four. When you when you look back now at your life and what you've done so far is if you could call your 21 year old self and talk to that young man is there what would you tell him uh i would say first off uh, understand your ego okay uh and and focus more on the purpose like i like i was hitting goals and and through visualizing and doing these things so i had purpose but my my purpose was I, I would I would have manipulated my my ego and my purpose a little bit uh, okay. uh, through conversation and 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 just said hey you got into coaching and it was at twenty for giving and find the bigger picture how do you not just help someone get to their goal how do you help them get to their goal to inspire others to get to their goal it's a mm-hmm. chain reaction and I feel like I've learned that probably in the last seven seven to eight years. And I've been really driven on leverage, the word leverage, and, and also uh, the word perspective is understand there's no right or wrong, to just go with it. Again, there's, there's two sides to every subject, and perspective has been a big key to me enjoying every daily process. That's awesome. I appreciate you saying that. Your core, so your core purpose in life right now, you wake up every day, you're, in one sentence, your core purpose is what? Uh, to externalize the internal champion. And I do I, that with uh, pretty much everything, not just business. I do it with my family. I do it when I'm in the grocery store uh, and I look at someone or, or say hello to someone. I say it with a, a strength and a giving type of strength of, you know, make their day better. And I've done it great as a coach is, is inspire people. How do you bring out that internal champion and make it a real thing? You know, make, that, make a dream a reality. And, and again, you can do it from a simple process of shaking someone's hand, looking them in the eye with true feeling. And you can do it through guiding someone to world championship. You know, I can, tell you, I, I can tell you visited with JP. You had that answer. You got that sentence down on that core purpose. Boom, right there. By the way, that's the smoothest, cleanest answer I've gotten on that so far. And I ask almost everybody that question. And I stole that question from JP. He knows I, he knows I use, this, use that on this podcast. So I appreciate it. I have it in a notebook, which is really funny. Uh, so I have a, a, a thing that I write down everything that is, is spent. Uh, from pennies that I find on the in, in, in the street, that I have a little book that I write down business and, and my personal spending, and I do that for the reason that it it forces me to look at my index card that has my purpose on it. That's great. So it keeps me in that mindset, mm-hmm. and then my five most important things that I need to do through business uh, that are the most uh, important things in my next month, and those change all the time. But I'm always focused on repeating those over and over and over, and I kind of brainwash myself into getting things done that way. That's awesome. Uh, it starts with the purpose. That's fantastic. So, so Onyx Sports. So right now, if somebody wants to order the product, they go to onyxsports.com, correct? Correct. Okay. And is that the only place they can order for right now? 
Uh, yeah, so we actually have our ambassadors, which we team up with gyms, and we have kiosks set up where they can okay. actually order custom uh, stuff that has their gym logo on it, puts their name on it, so it personalizes their gym, which is their loyal uh, uh, you know, team, and uh, it, it allows the gyms to, to kind of sell products uh, that have their logos on it without purchasing lots of orders, so you can do it through our ambassador gyms also. That's cool, and the ambassador list can be seen on the website, I believe, Correct. right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Very good. It's been an honor, my friend. Uh, really, I was, imp I was impressed with everything I, I looked up and studied. I mean, you've accomplished so much. I really appreciate you spending time and congrats on everything you've done with Onyx so far. Love it. Love everything Thank about you. it. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on. You bet. I wish you the best of luck as things continue. And uh, let's, I'll try to connect with you. I'll, I'll reach out and we'll, we'll get together for happy hour or dinner or something. Sounds great. All right, man. Take care. Nice great. to talk to you. All right. Bye-bye. The Rider Flex podcast can be heard just about anywhere these days, but you can visit riderflex.com slash podcast to learn more about us and become a supporter of the show. Send your comments and suggestions for future topics to the email address podcast at riderflex.com or leave us a voicemail at 888-964-5876 extension 710. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.